hello everyone time to play with some mobile stuff now so what are we gonna do today it's i'm gonna just go over a starter kit i built for this project why i did that it's because on the last time with the meetup app we get a bit overwhelmed because everything was changing and stuff like that so what i think it's we're gonna go over with like a baller plate setup kind with every like uh, stuff with the good um, a version in the package JSON, so we're gonna make sure then someone else came in like a month we don't gonna break everything so this is what we're gonna do today and I'm gonna go over everything I've built don't worry with that I don't gonna let you with stuff you don't know what they do first thing we're gonna use Expo Expo what is Expo Expo it's it's awesome Expo it's uh, I mean it's the way to build react native app right now when you don't need to do like a lot of uh, background kind of stuff and uh, and uh, yeah so i mean um, so with expo it's a way to first thing for the windows user to build ios app second thing it's like uh, like they say in their explanation here it's like kind of a ruby on rail for uh, react native so you have a lot of already built in package for example if you want to have the the photo capture like you want to do some kind of photo shot or stuff like that in your app you don't need to like connect the image picker stuff coming from a react native community and stuff like that and maybe like break your xcode stuff and, and thing like that with expo you just need to import the camera and you're good to go so this is really awesome so for the setup of that so me for me i'm going to use the cli so i love this command line stuff and so this is what we're going to have it's we're going to use the cli so for you i really want you to uh, install the global stuff here expo and for the ios user if you want to use uh, the uh, you're gonna need to have Xcode and stuff like that and I don't want to go over the installation of the stuff so uh, really if you want to like uh, go over uh, the installation of uh, React Native and stuff like that just go over the React Native uh, docs here and to go to over the get start uh, you click on the building project with native code and now you're gonna get all the setup stuff and you can have like Mac OS Android Windows and stuff like that and I really want you to read that because I don't want to go over that because this course, it's not about React Native himself. It's about how to build an app with GraphQL and React Native and Node.js. So we have already a lot of part to, to, to learn. So uh, the, the, the starter. So I've created this thing, this uh, mobile starter. It's pretty much simple. So this is what we're going to do. So just for setting this thing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clone this thing. You can fork it. You can do whatever you want with gonna work so now you are in the root of your project where you can see the server and now you do get clone you pass this thing and you call that like mobile like something like that so now after that I can jump on mobile and I make sure I have my stuff perfect I'm gonna run a yarn a install or I can just run yarn after that I'm gonna run another tab and I'm gonna just go inside my server and I'm gonna just run my server because I'm gonna need that because of Apollo my server is running and now this thing is uh, installing dependency don't don't worry like i told you we're gonna jump on everything i just want to make sure everyone is at the same place here and i'm gonna open my visual studio code right inside the mobile folder perfect now our, we can start with expo we're gonna jump exp start so here we expo gonna make sure the project is set up correctly if yes, you're gonna create a project. So we're gonna see that in a moment. So your project looks good, perfect. This sounds good. This is what we want. After that, you're gonna see, oh wow, what is that? It's a URL code. Yes, with Expo, you can download the, the Expo uh, application on the App Store or the Play Store. And after that, you can take your phone, grab your QR code stuff right from here, and now you can play with your, your app right inside your phone in real time. So that's just crazy. And now here, what I'm gonna run is I'm gonna run exp iOS. I'm gonna run uh, expo opening for my iOS. And yeah, so now that's uh, opening my iOS. So I'm gonna work on iOS, but I think with what I've seen from my stuff, everything was working with Android too. If you have question again, you can hit me on the comments. So now we're gonna make sure. So here I'm running on iPhone 6. So why I'm running on iPhone 6 because for me right now I don't really care about iPhone 6 and lower because 
we're gonna like uh, I mean we have a lot of phone to care so iPhone 5s uh, maybe but uh, 6 is the most where I work so now when they're refreshing stuff let make sure it's working and now you see and now if you see this thing welcome if you see that mean everything is work perfect we are good to go we just built Facebook no I, I'm just kidding right there what are we gonna do I'm gonna go over the code I've done and this is so because like I told you we need to have all this version and I don't want you to like copy and pasting my stuff coming from that description and make sure you have this version just start with this kit and we all make sure I've done installing everything because this thing is are just the one who I know maybe can break my stuff so here uh, we have a react almost like react fiber so alpha 12 this is what expo need we have expo 19 after that we have apollo client 1.9.00 make sure this is 00 because 0 0.1 this thing just at the top here you see lattice version break the app we get an error with this and react navigation we work on react uh, beta 11 this is the last one redux react redux and stuff like that are all there yes i'm gonna still use redux Apollo makes a lot of stuff for us, but we're gonna still use Redux. After that, I have ESLIN, like we have in the back end. After that, the ESLIN right there. After that, I, the Babylon C, I don't need setup, it's already built. I've put the editor config for get everyone working with the index size of two and working with space. After that, inside the app.js, this is where we store the application. So this thing, it's where the app is working. So here, as you can see, Import React, nothing is strange. UI manager, it's to get the layout animation enable experimental. It's just like automatic, automatically animate view to their new position when the next layout happening. So it's more for like Android stuff, but I just set up like if we have it accessible, we're gonna just set up that to be true. After that, I have Apollo provider. So this is from React Apollo. So for the one coming from Redux, that's gonna be, uh, that's gonna look like the provider from Redux, and yes. Here, the Apollo provider take the store and the client. The store, it's the store like we did with Redux. It's gonna be the Redux store and the client's gonna be the Apollo client. So I'm gonna show you that in the moment. What is temp provider? So I'm gonna make use of style component. So if we search right there for style component.com, it's uh, finally, it's a way to build uh, CSS and JavaScript. And uh, oops, not the GitHub, but if I click on documentation, it's all the stuff here, like it's all, like it's like um, uh, glamorous for the one who didn't know that. It's like a way finally to just build really a visual component and not need to do like CSS stuff. And I just like it in, in uh, React Native, it just makes sense. And I'm going to show you some stuff. And I what I've used too is the theming stuff right there, where here you can pass a theme. And now you can have multiple themes, stuff like that. So inside my code, what is this theme colors? It's I've put inside a source, inside util, inside constants, I've put uh, a constant called colors and I put the color of Twitter, like the blue of Twitter and the secondary and stuff like that. And when I pass them to the temp provider as a colors like that, what I pen, it's if I go to my welcome page example, this is how you create a component with the view. So here I just say, that's gonna be a view, that's gonna be a text. And now I can use them like that was a component. But now look at this, I can say props, that theme, that white. So by doing this, I'm gonna get the white color from here. So if I did say props, that theme, that primary, I'm gonna get the primary code from here. So after that, I can just change the code from here and that's gonna change there. And yes, you can tell me yes, but that you can also import a color, yes, but <laughs> I mean, I'm maybe lazy and I don't want to do this, but I like this way. Perfect. So here inside I have that GAS, now we have the welcome. So the component I just show you will just show, hey, welcome, if you see that, that work. And we have two components from style component inside that. So I call always the top one as the root. And I've put text for now for this one. So you don't, you see, I don't need to import React Native. I just import style coming from slash Natsy, really important. If you use my snippet, you do EMSN like that and you get that. For my snippet, you go there, you search for React. And that's going to be this one here with my name. Perfect. After that, the store. So really the thing you want to see, oh, I get to this point. So here, we're going to create the store like we did with Redux. 
I'm going to make use of Redux DevTool extension, what I'm going to show you in the next episode. And this is just a dev tool, to, uh, just a way to make the Redux dev tool working also with the React Native because by default it's not working. After that, we're going to make use of the Apollo client. So we need to import a new Apollo client. So this is where we create a variable with the network interface. And finally, the network interface. It's an instance of the create network interface from here. Who here take the URL, the URI, where your GraphQL is running, and this is my backend stuff. So if I click on this thing, that's going to be my uh, backend stuff. So that's why, like, if I do graphical like that, uh, not graphical like that, but graphical like this, now I'm good. After that, here I see const middleware. So I like to my, uh, module my stuff. So here I put the client middleware. So the client middleware. So this is all you can get, like, access to the middleware coming from... Apollo, and I'm gonna put Tonk with another middleware. Who almost everyone know in the Redux world, it's gonna make uh, us be able to do asynchronous action. After that, here this is the thing where what you don't maybe gonna see a lot. It's here. I create my store, and I do redo source, and I put the clients in because my redo source need to receive the client to do Apollo client redo source. So this is the way Apollo asks us to put the reducer is by putting there. They put in their decks, they put that inside the same file, and this is pretty easy. But for me, I like to manage my stuff, so that's why I put that as a function here, and I put the client reducer from here, and now I combine reducer. And after that, I put uh, initial state of undefined, and I do the compose with dev tool coming from here, React uh, the dev tool extension, and I do the stuff like that. So here we have almost done. You see, I don't do, I don't did, I didn't do a lot. And now, I mean, we are good. <laughs> we have nothing more. I mean, just like I just set up the stuff, so I don't want nobody here to get break. And here, I mean, if you like this stuff, you can just start up a new uh, setup with that. And I have nothing more. I just set up to make sure nothing gonna break with the other version stuff. So now, when I'm gonna work with uh, with you on the on the other video. I'm gonna just add the other package and then I'm gonna make sure they are not breaking with the version we run. But keep in mind, all this version in the package JSON need to always stay the same. You, you can try and go rogue and try to, oh yeah, I can try the next version of React or stuff like that. But if that break, that's gonna be hard for me after that to manage that. So I hope that makes sense. I'm gonna put the link in the description. So you, as you can see, that was really simple. You clone this stuff and you set up this thing in the root. Why I say the root, you can make that in another repo if you want. For me, just because I want to have my both repo right inside my um, root like that. So I hope you enjoy and I hope you're going to enjoy the mobile part. That's going to be awesome. Trust me on that. We're going to learn so much. We're going to learn subscription. We're going to learn mutation. We're going to learn the query stuff. We're going to learn optimistic UI. And after that, you're going to just fall in love like I did with GraphQL and Apollo. Apollo make my life so much easier right now in the front end and I just cannot live without them. So I hope you enjoy and we're going to talk in the next one. Have a good day. Bye.